Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. Today we're going to have a super fun <laughs> time painting these lovely, wonderful abstract trees using wonderful techniques. Um, I go over them as I go in the video. There's just so much fun to play with these techniques that I have to make really cool abstract textures and watercolor. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I mean, it's really just getting out of your comfort zone, playing with things. The more you play with watercolor, the more you can experiment, the more you realize what kind of watercolors you want to be, what kind of things you want to paint, the subject matter, the actual way you execute it, etc., etc. So again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. So let's get started. All right, so I'm using Fabriano cold pressed paper here, and I'm going to go over some of the paints and brushes I use. I'll use the number 12 Neptune series from Princeton Velvet Touch. I'm going to say Neptune series. <laughs> And I love to use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna because they make a nice granulated wash. It's really kind of pretty. You can add other colors to it, but ultramarine blue and just burnt sienna. And almost every single watercolor maker has those two colors. I'm going to be probably using burnt umber and uh, a little Payne's gray or another kind of gray. If you grab my Payne's gray here. Put them a little bit over there. Play around with that. So basically, Draw a funky tree. I'll give you the reference photo that I use. I just kind of put two trees in there. There's a whole bunch of funky trees. Um, you can see the funky trees that I saw. These are really kind of cool trees in Portugal. Um, so I wanted to play around with doing something like abstract with them. And I know the ground is green, but maybe I'll change the ground to a color or something. So just draw in the funky little branches. I'm gonna grab the number 12. We'll concentrate on the bigger trunk and then work our way down to the smaller trunks afterwards. When you mix these two colors together, when they go on the paper, they, all the nooks and crannies of the granulated wash go into the paper. Now this time, I'm going to actually add more burnt sienna, so it's more of a brown, but I have the blue in there still. And I also have with me some salt, so we can play around with sprinkling that to get some nice cool textures, all that great stuff. So, I'm going to do wet on dry. i got the two colors and mixed in here. I mean, a fair amount of this. I'm going to mix up a lot. See, I'm mixing up a lot. Look at the, the nice big puddle we got going here. All right. I'm just going to put the color right in here. Maybe a little more blue. And the consistency is kind of like coffee. I'm going to make put a little more water in it and it'll make it more tea consistency. I just want to add some more ultimate blue though. Okay. And I'm going to take this big brush. And I'm working my way to all the little, all the trunks that I see that I can actually paint with this big brush. And the little ones we'll go back with later. So I'm doing the dark color here. On the big areas that I can kind of do with this brush. The smaller ones, I'll grab a smaller brush. Kind of go in there. I'm working in both trunks at the same time. So just drawing it in helps you guide where you want to put the paint. You don't necessarily have to draw this. You can look at the photograph and just kind of wiggle your paintbrush and see what you come up with. I'm going to grab a little more blue in this one. Just going right here and filling all the wonderful little lines that I see that are big. We'll be adding some greens in a bit. Just doing the browns first. A lot of wiggling here. <laughs> and you can make it more blue, brown, whatever, whatever works for you. So this area that is really kind of wet and damp right now, the tree trunk, just gonna kind of go out like this. I'm gonna put some salt in in a second while it's damp. Not when it's super puddly wet, it's probably not a great idea to do it then. All right, I can already see the color is kind of changing a little bit since they uh, granulated. So it's a little damp. This one's really kind of puddly. I'm gonna wait this one. You could add salt. Mine should be a little bit thicker. This is kind of small, but I'll just put some of the little salt in here. This is uh, the the pink Himalayan. I would love to have had them bigger, but 
didn't happen. And you have to kind of let that sit and dry and it will have this wonderful little texture to it. Now I'm going to clean up this a bit. I want to change the bottom. Now the bottom could be coming down from the trees. It could be green, but maybe put a purple or pink in there just to change it up. And I'm going to grab my ultimate blue. If you have magenta or pink or whatever, I have an opera color, kind of funky color here. Um, it's really bright pink. Kind of play around with some colors that you have, watercolor. Don't always use the same colors. So I'll mix the two. It's a nice purple. Depending on how much blue you have, et cetera, et cetera. And you can even mix the burnt sienna in there. Just changes everything up. So now you can see the salt kind of getting in there. I'm hoping when I tilt it, it still stays there. Good, it does. So you can use the same brush or grab a bigger one. I'm going to grab this huge two inch brush. Just a cheap little brush I saw in uh, one of the craft stores. Get some water on it. I'm grabbing this purple brown color here, getting more blue. And let's just play with adding this color in right over the tree trunk. See, now I got some burnt sienna in here. It's kind of cool. I'm going to go in here and grab some pink. Just moving the paint around. Now the water color is only going to go where the paint goes. I mean, excuse me, the paint's only going to go where the water is. So obviously there's no water down here, right? And I'm tilting it. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stop because the paper is not wet. I'm adding a little more ultimate blue. So you can do one of two things. Take it, I'm sorry, making all this. <laughs> you can just take your brush and wet it, or you could spray it. Spring is kind of cool. Look at that, it looks like roots. Right? Looks like it created some roots there. So try to spray. Tilt it. Isn't that cool? Looks like little roots. I think that's cool. And of course you have to like wipe up your little mess here. And kind of go down here and wipe up some of the mess. Right? Doesn't it look like roots? Now at this point you can kind of play with maybe they look like streaks, so I'm gonna go back in and grab some pink and blue. Maybe a little thicker blue and thicker pink. Just playing around with tapping some of this color in, moving it around. More ultimate blue. I could start to add some green too if I wanted to. So grab some yellow around here. See, then I'm playing with all the colors. Just kind of moving it. Now it's only going to go where the water is, right? So look how cool that looks. It looks like the roots. I'm going to keep playing with this. I'm going to grab a little more these two colors again. Out here, a little darker. A little more blue. And I feel like I'm going to grab some more pink color too. Lost some of my purple and some pink. So I'll go back with this opera color. It's really kind of cool. And loosen that up. Look at that intense pink. Why not just play around with tapping that color? And see what happens. Just tapping it and tilting my paper. I'm creating some fun here. Different kind of texture, color, intensity. Oops, <laughs> I'm moving my pad a little too much. But see that? Look at that. That's so cool. I know, I get excited and loosen this up. You want it pretty loose so it moves. I'm going to move it down those little veins going down there on that side. And you can see the granulation happening in the paper. It's really cool. Some more blue and burnt sand up here. I'm just going to tap a little bit here so those move like cool little roots. Isn't that cool? I don't know. I find that fun. I might grab some more burnt sienna at this point. And why not get a little green in here? A lot of pink <laughs> happening. I'll remove the color. And of course, for 
green, I use Cabin Yellow Deep, oops, and uh, Prussian Blue or Peacock Blue. We'll make a nice bright green. I use Peacock Blue. I can add way more Peacock Blue so it's more of a turquoise. Let's get some fun in here. Let's see what we got. Maybe even just turquoise itself. You just never know how cool this is. You can try some of those um, concentrated watercolors. Look at the turquoise. Oh my God, I'm loving this. It's just kind of different. So right there, I put the turquoise in. Again, you can add the yellow. And you get that bright green happening. And I'm gonna spray that area. Where's my spray bottle? I need more water in here. And move that around. Look at that. Roots. They look like little roots. Again, just wipe up some of this extra. Is that not cool? I just find it fun. The salt is still sticking on the tree. And I might just grab can splatter a little bit. I wouldn't kind of go up in here yet. Just tap a little bit. If I have to use a paper towel, I'll do that. Just it so it doesn't go up here, the color. And I'll splatter a little bit of this turquoise down here. Just like the way it looks. And maybe some yellow. going to add more fun to the trees. See, we want it up there. Boom. Now, all that coolness. I'm just moving around. See, just tilting your paper. Whee! Look at that. Now again, you can take some salt while that's drying. Kind of put it in the wet, damp areas. And we'll have kind of really cool texture come out. I just love the turquoise. This kind of reminds me of that French watercolor that I love, Mac Foley. Um, I did a tutorial a while back that kind of reminisces with the bowls, kind of like his style. Now this little area I don't like here, I might manipulate it with my paintbrush. I'm gonna grab the number eight long round. I'm just gonna mix up some of these colors in here. I'm just gonna manipulate the roots a little bit. It's not organic looking, so I'll just grab some water and kind of push that around and tilt it. Let's see if it goes down. Nope, I'm gonna have to spray it. The spray really makes it work. Yeah, see? Gives it that organic root look. And just kind of mop up the excess on the bottom and you're good to go. Look how cool that looks. <laughs> it just looks cool. And the trees didn't take too long to paint, right? Now that we have the skinnier brush, we can go back in and we can add those lovely branches that are smaller with the skinnier brush up here while the other stuff is drying. You can concentrate on these ones. And I just drew a bunch of branches in here. You can start to make them a different color. I'll grab some turquoise. It doesn't always have to be brown. Have some fun with this. Make it more green. Are we adding the yellow? But if you really wanted to keep it really dark, so I've got the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. That makes a nice brown. I'm going to put some green in there in a bit once that dries. Get all those funky tree branches in there. Because they are pretty funky. Can make a little bit thicker ones come in here. Now I'm just kind of winging at this point because I already drew in my basic ones. Now I'm adding in more branches. You don't have to do that. You can just kind of keep to what you see in the picture. But I'm just making it a little different, a little funky. All right, and you can put something back here too if you want. I just want to keep like that. So now we have to let everything dry and see what happens when we take the salt off. One little trick, by the way, before you can, before we sign off, uh, you can use alcohol, like rubbing alcohol. 
and just spray when it's damp. Look at that. Kind of does this funky thing. Sometimes it just goes right back into it, but if you kind of like wait till it's even almost dry, it works great. Look at that. Great texture. All right, well, let's let it dry. All right, now that it's dry, you can see all, I just kind of made a little mistake here trying to erase some pencil lines and it's scrubbed, but that's okay. See all the cool textures that the salt created? The blue came through that, um, the tree, right? Because, and then you can see the granulated wash have different colors kind of separating in the grooves and here too, all that fun stuff. Now my salt was tiny. If your salt was thicker, it would be bigger, more brighter kind of blue coming through here. So it's really cool to use those two colors. So let's add some greenery. I'm gonna grab my cadmium yellow deep and grab some peacock blue this time. I mean, you can use brush and blue, it'll make the same kind of green. We're gonna play around with this greens. Um, I might have some burnt sienna in here too. And you know what would be kind of cool? If we grab some gold paint, I'm trying to find my gold. Um, it does a kind of like, even though it's watercolor, it kind of does this thing where it separates. So it makes a little sparkly. If you wanted to do that also in here, just a whole bunch of gold would be kind of fun. We'll play around with some of that. Or you could splatter some gold in here. It'd just be a little more magical. So, oops, I'm not gonna use the salt up top. So I'm just taking my big old floppy 12 Princeton Neptune brush. I'm just gonna go in here and start to add some green and put more turquoise in here. And I'm just tapping. Now, if you wanna flip it upside down, that might help also. I'm just kinda of go in here, tippy tap. You can also, uh, we have really a lot of loose color. You cover the front of this and splatter. So get a big brush to splatter that. I'm gonna grab some paper towels. I don't want that other area to get wet. So you can kind of play around with big blobs and some splatter up here in the trees. Grab just paint plain old yellow too. We're gonna to spray it too and some turquoise. Remember, we don't wanna get the other part. We wanna get this part. Just one really loose. And then I'm just gonna grab some turquoise itself, which is the peacock blue. Kind of tap some of the color here. And you can splatter that too. It's really kind of wet, as you can see. Now we do a little spray bottle. I'm gonna tilt it, put this up, tilt it. I got my little spray bottle, where are you? This is the alcohol one and this is the water one. Spray that, kind of move that paint around. It's really gonna be a mess kind of situation, so you really wanna make sure that underneath you have some, you know, you don't have it on a nice table, you have it so you can soak it up. Lift this up. And I'll just tap a little bit of my paper towel here. And we'll flip it back and see how it looks. Yeah, it's getting there. It's not my favorite. So once it's already wet, we can kind of play with adding more color again. And maybe we'll add some more color with more depth. Um, I've got that Prussian blue here and some burnt sienna. So you're going to play with all the colors. That's the whole point. You can just tap some darker ones up here. In between, add some bright yellow too. Don't be afraid to play with your paints. So I'm going to just grab the yellow. It's kind of messy. It's mostly green yellow now. But I'm going to go play with just kind of tip tapping in between my branches here while it's all damp and wet. Put some down here. You know, kind of just even big mushes of yellow. Grab my blue, put some green over here. Again, just playing with the trees. So I might go grab just the peacock turquoise like we did before. It's getting too watery. Playing around with this color, moving it around. 
see what happens. Just like moving, it's really, really wet. Kind of lift that. All right, I'm gonna just tap a little bit with my paper towel on here. And then we can even have some of it drip down. So why not just kind of play with grabbing some paint over my tree trunk, water, lifting. Kind of moving it around, lifting, my brush. See that? Having a little fun. Grab that turquoise. Just love the turquoise. I don't know, getting really into it. Kind of moving it around here, grabbing water, just tapping around. See where it goes. Clean water, move this around. Kind of going down to the tree. See that? Movement. It's too white back here. I'm gonna go just kind of mush this water in here and have the paint kind of move around. So we'll leave some white up there. I don't wanna leave a lot of white. Just a little bit. Now that's too much paint in here. It's gonna dry light though. You can play with like taking paper towel, just kind of moving the paint off the paper. All right, like the sun's coming through it, so. Like that. Paper towel. <laughs> We're having fun here. Now, I'm gonna splatter a little bit of this gold. I made such a green mess. Get my gold loosened up here. It's all about the fun. And I actually need some more gold. It just adds a little something to your picture. Oh, that was yellow ochre. <laughs> Real-time videos, guys. If I was a painting on a retreat or workshop, you would see how crazy it is. See how the gold is kind of repelling even on the palette? It's moving the paint weird like that. We're going to do that to our paper. So just grab something and just kind of splatter it. And it's very wet up there, so it will add that little movement where it's kind of doesn't want to be with the water. It repels it, it's kind of like oil and water. I'm going to add a little gold down here. Just adds a little something. It's very wet up here. But I think that's kind of cool. It's like a magical, funky tree. Right? With the roots. That little technique of spraying makes those nice little roots. A lot of fun. I mean, you can have so much fun with this. You can add more trees. I might, you know, I have just two trees. I might go back in and add, it's very kind of, well, it's not that way. Um, another tree in the back. I think I need three. I don't like to have things in twos. It's a personal thing. So again, the ultimate blue and burnt sienna. So I can do like another little one in the background here. Kind of peeking through. And now it's very wet, so it's kind of rolling like this to the tree which is kind of cool. If you want to make it really light, that like gray, tone it down a little bit. Now I have gold in my brush. But see, it just added so much by having that third one right there in that window. I'm just gonna wiggle and add just that little bit. Now it's not in my original sketch, but this is what we talk about intuitive painting. As you go along, you see what is it missing? You think to yourself, step back, step away. If you feel like, mm, I feel like my painting isn't doing something and I don't like it. You need to step back, step away. Sometimes look through your phone is really kind of helpful, you know? Or if you have a um, painter's uh, magnifying glass where it, it retracts the other way so you can see it from a distance, it's kind of cool. like the little skinny branches that looks much better maybe now I feel like I need to add a few more back here too like another one I'll probably have to have another one because I do like odds and that was like now it's evens again and I don't like even so much 
I think odds make better composition. I'm not mad. Let's retry. Now it's really filling in nicely, isn't it? And I'll have a little one back here. Maybe not as little as the other ones, maybe a little bit bigger to offset how those look. And again, the two colors, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'll have my little trees. Really kind of fun, cool. I hope this was fun. <laughs> and that's what it's all about. So that gold paint, because it was so wet, just like dissipated. You can't even see it in there. You might have to go back in again. I got yellow ochre all over my fingers. And just mix up some more gold. And like splatter a little bit again. Yeah, so now you can see it. It was very, very damp. It's really kind of cool though, when it's wet, damp. You don't want to when it's super wet. You can just use the gold to outline some of the tree branches. That'd be really cool too. I really do want you just, just to play and have fun when you do watercolor. And you know, it's very light up here. I could have made the trees much darker, the tree. So Prussian blue, nice deep blue here, the yellow, burnt umber. I can get these trees a little bit dark up here. You know, now it's changed how this looks, the composition, a little more mysterious, right? A little deeper color. And that's what's great about watercolor. You can just kind of go over that and glaze that and see how that looks. I kind of like the depth of the dark tree like that. You might have said, what? She ruined it. <laughs> it's just playing with watercolor. I'm going to add a little blue. And I can leave some of the light underneath. Now, if you feel like you got a little too much and got carried away like me, you can just go back in with paper towel. I suggest twisting it. See, I'm twisting it, and you get a nice texture. Really kind of cool. Now, I really still like the depth of the dark color right there. It really kind of brings it in. Do you know what I mean? So, lots of fun. Play with this. Have a lot of fun with it. Don't be intimidated. You know, you can go back in and add a little nice pretty bright green back here. Just taking a little of that. But I really want you to have fun. This was like a fun tutorial playing with wet on wet and um, salt, a little bit of the alcohol, and granulate and wash. All the good stuff. See how much better that looks now, adding that other tree back there and throwing in this bright chartreuse green. Just add so much. And there you go. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Let me know. Give me a comment below if you enjoyed this. Also, why not uh, support me on my Patreon where I have really exclusive and in-depth and extensive tutorials um, if you're enjoying my free content here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. And you can find the link in the description box and learn all about Patreon and you can join and cancel anytime. And I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Take care and have a great day.